Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to place a repeating pattern on a shirt in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNazer. Today, we're doing something really cool. It's kind of tough, so you might see me struggle a little bit. I know that's gonna give you a smile. <laughs> and, um, we're gonna be taking a pattern. We're gonna be using Houndstooth, which is one of my favorite of, the, of all the patterns. We're gonna show you how to make a repeating pattern in Photoshop and then we're gonna use that, scale it correctly, and then I'm gonna basically make it look like it's wrapping around a piece of clothing. Very, very cool episode. You guys are gonna have a lot of fun. Okay, cool, let's get into it. All right, so we've got our houndstooth uh, pattern here, but it's not really repeating. It doesn't repeat incredibly well. So what I wanna do is make sure I simplified down to about as simple as it can go. And in this case, it's just gonna be four squares. It's gonna be this dark square, uh, this light square and then these two um, these two patterns here so it might look like you need to include a lot of this pattern to really go at it but if you can simplify a pattern down to you know down to its most simple elements that's usually going to get you the best result when you're creating a pattern so what we're going to do is i'm going to grab my crop tool and basically i'm just going to make a selection there from the top left of this dark square down to the bottom right of my light square there we go and we're gonna hit this checkbox up there and that's the pattern that's gonna define all of our houndstooth. And it doesn't even, it doesn't look like that would be houndstooth, but it totally is. Now, the next thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and zoom out to 100%. I'm gonna make this a bit smaller because it's still quite large. We can see if I move this over here, that's going to be way too large. Oh, delete. Let's just make sure we, here we go. Move that over there and, oh, okay. Well, it's just moving the entire thing. If you don't want to move the entire thing, hit C for the crop tool and make sure to hit the delete crop pixels and then hit enter and it'll delete everything else around there. All right, so let's see about moving it over and we can see it is way too big right now. I want these to be on her shirt. So what we're gonna do is make it a little bit smaller. Image, down to image size, and then instead of our width of 160, let's go down to like 80. There we go. And now let's see how this looks. So let's just hit shift, click and drag and there we go. It's still a little bit too big. We want it to be a bit smaller. So we're gonna go to image, down to image size. Now you don't have to do this. Um, this can be something that you can do after the fact. I'm just doing it before because we wanna make a repeating pattern here. And if I make it too large, then I'm just gonna to have to scale it down and then it won't repeat again because I'll have to scale it down. And then instead of covering the whole image, it'll just repeat on a small area. So I wanna make sure I can get um, the most uh, area that I can and actually have it be real, um, be, the, the, be the right size, not real. All right, let's try one more time. So we'll go to image and image size down to about 40 pixels. Now let's just go 30. Why not? Feeling good. Let's do it. Let's click shift and drag. And there we go. So that's going to be our hound's tooth. Now, how do we get this little guy to actually look like it is a repeating pattern? It's not that hard. We're going to edit up here and down to define pattern. And we'll just call this hound's tooth uh, four because I've done this a couple times. Hound's tooth four and I'm gonna hit okay. So now here in my other document, basically what I'll have to do is fill a layer. We're just gonna create a new layer. We're gonna to have to fill a layer with this pattern. So on a new layer, hit shift delete or shift backspace. And we can see up here, you can choose, a lot of the time we'll use like a foreground color or background color, but in this case, we're gonna click pattern and I'm gonna to scroll to our custom pattern. I've done it a few times, but this is the one that we actually wanna select. You can hover over it and you can see Howden's Tooth 4, 30 pixels by 36 pixels RGB. So we're gonna click on that. We're gonna click on blending mode normal, opacity 100, everything else is perfect right there and we're gonna hit okay. And there we go. Let's hit F for full screen and zoom in. So now we can see we do have a Howden's Tooth pattern that covers our entire image, which is exactly what we wanted and it, uh, it looks great. So we just took a little square there. It's not a square, it's like it's a rectangle. We took just the basic, the simplest part of the pattern and now we're repeating it over and over again and we have our Howden's Tooth pattern, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so we've got our pattern over here. We're just gonna lower the opacity now and kind of like figure out how large or how small we want it to be and how well it fits on the shirt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If we do want it to be a little bit smaller, that's not a big deal. Let's go ahead and hit Command T and we'll just make this a little bit smaller. We don't wanna make it like this small because then we would just have to repeat this whole pattern over and over again and that's why we tried to get it about the right size to begin with. If we were to make it this small, you'd wanna make it smaller in the original tile and then it would just repeat actually a bit smaller. So there we go. That's the reason why we tried to get it pretty close. So we'll get some fairly large hound's tooth going on there on her shirt. Okay, this is gonna look really cool. Now the next thing we're gonna do, if I bring the opacity back up to 100, I'm gonna just hit from normal, we're gonna change this down to 
multiply. And what that's going to do is get rid of everything that's white. So I can kind of see through it now. It's just going to make things a little bit darker. And we're going to wind up lowering the opacity anyway because we don't want this to be 100% black. It wouldn't really look right if it were. Okay, so we've got this pattern and it's looking pretty good, but there are still a few things that we want to do to it because it doesn't look like it's actually wrapping around the shirt. So I want to make sure a couple of things. Um, first, we're going to be doing it in a couple different duplicates. So I want one for like the front part of our shirt and one for the sleeves as well. So I'm going to hit Command J, duplicate that over again. Let's make that invisible. And then we'll put a layer mask and just define this to be visible on our shirt. So Alt or Option and click on your layer mask is going to make a black layer mask. All right. And then what we're going to do is paint white right here on our shirt. And keep in mind a couple of things, guys. Not only do we want this to just be visible where her shirt is, but keep in mind like wrinkles and, and bunches and things like that. Um, those are all going to show up with the hound suit. Like that's if the pattern were actually on her shirt, um, that's all stuff that would actually be affected by the, um, you know, it'll affect the hound's tooth eventually because it's going to need to look like it's, it's actually wrapping around and it's, you know, um, coloring her shirt and everything like that. All right, so I'm just doing a relatively quick layer mask job here. It doesn't have to be perfect just yet. And at this point, you could still change the size of your hound's tooth if you wanted to do that. Um, you would just unlink the layer from the layer mask and you can still, you can move the hound's tooth, you can change the size, um, really anything you want to do. Just making sure that the layer mask is still in the right place. All right, so we can see already we're relatively close. We made our pattern and uh, we're putting it in there. So we're going to go ahead and unlink these so I can show you. Now you can just move your layer, for instance, and your layer mask will stay in the same place, which is really, really cool. Okay, the first thing I want to do, let's just try a general warp. I'm going to click on my layer and I'm going to hit Command T. I'm going to right click and go down here to warp. And then we're just going to start pushing and pulling this in some ways here. I'm looking, you know, mostly to create something that just doesn't look like it's perfect um, because why would it be? It's supposed to be like wrapping around, wrapping around our shirt, right? There we go. And we can kind of pull these sides in and things like that to make it look like it's kind of like warping around, um, you know, around the edges. It's got that bit of warp to it. Let's go ahead and pull these as well. There we go. So this is just using the warp tool. Nothing too fancy here just yet. All right. And it's just going to make it look like, you know, it's actually actually kind of forming around her. So let's hit enter and uh, we can just see there's the before where it just looks like totally plain, look like it's pasted on there. And here's the after where it looks like, you know, it's kind of like conforming a little bit. Now there are a couple of more things we can do with this. And this is going to be with the liquify tool. So the warp tool is like great for large, like general shapes. And then the liquify tool is going to help you when you're dealing with a, with a smaller area. So we're going to go to filter and then we're going to go down here to liquify. There we go. And now you can see basically it brings up our pattern after it has the warp, but I can't really see anything. So I'm going to go on here to advanced mode and I'm going to hit show backdrop. And here's what's going to allow me to show, see actually like what we're going to be affecting. So this area for the bottom of the shirt, for instance, I know I want to pull that in. Let's just change our density down a little bit lower and our pressure down a little bit lower. I'm going to bring our density up. I don't want to affect a large area like a whole lot. I just want to kind of like push it in there. This is all we need to do and hit OK. And it's going to see, I'll just hit Command Z, kind of make it look like it's pushing in. And I want to make sure it looks like it wraps around the edges as well. So we're going to go to Filter, again, down to Lookify. And let's make sure it wraps down the edges. So we're just going to push this in from the sides there. So it's going to have that like wrapping look to it. All right, and we'll even come in here from the top as well. There we go. So this is kind of that wrap that we were talking about. Let's hit OK. You can do this step by step, guys. I wouldn't recommend doing it all at the same time. There we go. So we can see here's a before where it looks like it just kind of cuts off and there's the after where it kind of looks like it really is wrapping around. All right, let's do the same thing with the top left shoulder here and then back over there a little bit there. Uh, Shift Command X, by the way, is the keyboard shortcut for the uh, for the Lookify tool in case you don't feel like um, going through your keyboard, your through your menus every time, which I don't. I don't like going through my menus. I would rather keyboard shortcut everything because it saves time and it's fun and it makes you look like you're good at Photoshop. So all positives. There we go. Let's hit OK there. And we can see there we go. It looks like it's wrapping even more, especially there you can see it like it's kind of like wrapped around over the shoulders. All right. So let's just make this visible and invisible now. And then we're going to work in some of these like little wrinkles and things like that. So let's hit Shift Command X again, make our brush a little bit smaller 
and then we'll just work in these wrinkles, make it look like it's not, you know, not necessarily perfect. Hit OK, and there we go. Hit the before and the after. Just makes it look like it's not as perfect. I don't really like that. We'll just change it a little bit. Make our brush a little bit smaller, bring our density up, and there we go. We'll hit OK. Very cool. So there we have it looking like it's actually wrapping around our subject, which is great. We can lower our, our opacity. We can do really whatever we want there. Um, there is one more thing we're going to do, not just yet, because uh, we need to bring this over top, but um, we're good for like the main portion of our shirt, which it's really cool how this happens. So now what we're going to do is basically do the same thing. Remember we said we were going to do this in two steps um, with our arm. So let's hit Command T. Let's make it a bit smaller. There we go. We just kind of want to match the size if we can. And I'm going to hit Command T again. We're going to click on Warp, and I'm just going to warp this area in. There we go. Let's load a black layer mask on there. So Alt or Option, click on your layer mask. And here we are. Let's just paint white right here on top of this area. And it doesn't really matter if these like line up, like if this houndstooth doesn't exactly line up with that one. Um, the reason being, if you were to um, if you were to actually like make a shirt, oftentimes those patterns won't line up perfectly anyway. So not a huge deal. You we could even do a third um, for for this little sleeve here, which we should probably wind up doing. All right, there we go. That looks pretty good. So let's just hit Command J. We're going to do a, another one for for the sleeve itself, for for this guy. Okay, Shift Command X, and I want to like really make it look like it's wrapping around. So we're just going to push this in, which is going to give us this really nice wrap effect. There we go. So you can see I'm just kind of like clicking a lot and kind of dragging these in. And let's see how that looks. There we go. So it really does, I'm hitting Command Z so we can see the before and after, look like it's wrapping all the way back around. All right, that looks great. Now let's go ahead and bring something more on the, on the sleeve itself. Okay, and I'm going to fill my layer mask with black now and then paint white just on my layer mask. And here, here we have yet a different pattern and kind of like a different flow. So it does look like it's actually, you know, like changing directions and everything during, you know, as it travels through the uh, piece of clothing there. All right, it just needs to be a little bit smaller. So we're gonna hit Command T and there we go. If you unlink them, which is what we should do, it'll move just the pattern and your layer mask will stay in the same place, which is what we actually want for this. All right, still we want to hit Shift Command X. I do want to bring this in. Let's bring our density up. There we go. And hit OK. So there we have our houndstooth pattern and it's repeating over and over again. Let's just hit Command T and rotate that around just a little bit there. All right, I did rotate it around, which I do want to do, but in, I have to redo this. Um, I have to redo my liquify as well because I rotated around. It wouldn't look right if you didn't redo the liquify. All right, really, really cool. So let's go ahead and make these all invisible now and we'll see what we've got. Now, the last thing we want to do, just to make sure it really does look like these patterns are in the shirt, not just Photoshopped over top of them, um, we can make our layer mask a little bit better if we wanted to. Up here, it's kind of going over her neck, but you guys know how to make a good layer mask. Just spend some more time on it. Same technique, just spend more time. There we go. We could even build in a collar Look at that. Whoa, so realistic. Oh my God, she's got a collar. Um, <laughs> why not? We're going to make those three invisible. Next thing I want to do is we're going to go to, um, we're going to create a new layer. We're going to hit D and then X, and that's going to bring up our default colors and then switch them. And we're going to go to select color range, and it's going to select everything on this image that's close to white. And as I bring up my fuzziness, it's going to select more and more things that are close to white. There we go. And this is, it's a JPEG image, so it's kind of compressed. So that's why we're getting all this like, you know, weird um, artifacts and things. If this was a raw image or, you know, something that was straight out of camera, you wouldn't be getting that sort of stuff. But I'm basically selecting these areas that are really close to white. So that's what we've got there. I'm gonna hit okay now. And now on top of all this, so we've got all that areas that's selected with white. I'm gonna hit B for my brush tool. And then we're just gonna paint white. I'm gonna hit uh, Command H to hide this. I'm going to paint white over top of this area and what it's going to do is it's going to make it look like we've actually got some highlight coming in over top of our houndstooth. 
So it's going to look like it's actually, on, the houndstooth is in the fabric, not on top. We'll just lower the opacity down to about 50%, and there we can see. Now the next thing we're gonna do real quick again, use our brush tool, and I'm gonna sample this color. We're gonna go to select color range. There we go, now we're sampling that slightly darker color. So we're gonna hit okay, and now we're gonna use our brush tool, and I'm just gonna paint in with the same color now, in those dark areas, and I'm gonna change this from normal down here to multiply. And then we'll just lower the opacity on that as well. So it's going to bring in both the highlight, let's just bring it on highlights, bring in the highlights and the shadows, you can see back over top of the shirt, which is really gonna give it that structure. So let's just shift, shift click all those, Command G, and then we have before and or after putting a houndstooth pattern on top of a shirt. Pretty cool effect, you guys could use this with any pattern over anything. The secrets are just using the liquify tool, the warp tool, and then at the end grabbing those shadows and the highlights and putting them back over top of the pattern. It's gonna make everything look real and perfect and beautiful. And I hope to see your examples down below. If you could take a picture of a client and they're like, oh, I don't like that shirt, I want it to be cooler. Well, throw some houndstooth on it and no one's gonna complain. Everyone loves houndstooth. <laughs> Guys, have so much fun with this. It's gonna be great. I can't wait to see your results. Please post them in a comment down below and I'll flirn you later. Bye everyone. You wanna see what a real houndstooth looks like? Check this out. Ha, 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 ha.